Half a day Facebook Live. It's us. We're back. Nick and I have actually never done this show before, so it's super cool to be on Line Exclusive. <laughs> yeah, we're here for Jay Jay's <laughs> after party. Yay! It's going up on a Wednesday. <laughs> right. And we have with us a very pregnant <laughs> Rick Rossini, a senior policy advisor for Senator Fernando Estevez, and as well as Adrian Cruz, the head of Free Association. So, besides them matching, let's talk about right. let's wow, talk about the guests we had tonight. We had uh, newcomers. Kelly. Yes, fresh mm. faces. Yeah. What were your thoughts? I thought you know Kelly did very well. I think she came off as I mean her leadership style was I mean despite her excellent qualifications and experience and background, um, she's she seemed like the type of leader that still wants to learn, still wants to listen. Um, she seemed very open minded. I don't know Julius that that much, but I, I have seen Kelly actively on the campaign trail, um, on the side of the road, in her very vibrant, bright yeah. orange and green colors. Mm -hmm. So she seemed very active on um, as a you know a candidate, and I, I saw she she did pretty well in the primary as a newcomer, and she seemed she she she's very cognizant of who she needs to reach out to, uh, to get her in the uh, past for success in the general. So um, that's what I, I gathered from Kelly, at least. Well, um, I know Julius on a personal level, um, and so it's great to see that he's um, expanded his platform from the time that he first was contemplating uh, becoming a senator. Um, but I, I've seen both of them in action, and uh, I think that um, because of where they placed in, in the uh, primary election, they have a lot of work uh, ahead mm -hmm. of them. Like, mm -hmm. like you said, you don't know Julius, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think they're now trying to reach a broader audience. Um, they have a lot of work ahead mm -hmm. of them. And uh, I'm happy to see that they're both really trying to uh, stick to their guns as far as their platforms. You know, there's a lot of um, people who, are, who make it past the primary and then all of a sudden their platforms change. And I'm happy to see that uh, both of them have seemed to have stuck to their guns and are expanding on it and, um, mm -hmm. you know, good for them. Right, and we saw, like you were saying, in the placement of them coming in the race, although they made it through to the general, right. pending that certification mm -hmm. from the Guam Election Commission, uh, was, I believe, uh, Julius coming in Seven. seventh, and then Seven. Dr. Tyson, I believe, at 10, Ten. Right. In, in her side of the ticket. And so, do you think that either has, a, has the upper hand when it comes to experience and working in the government? Well, J Julius has worked in the government. Right. Uh, Kelly, I think, is more on the academic side. Mm -hmm. um, but really, that doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. The point is, is is their platform appealing to the mm -hmm. voters? Um, are their platforms um, here at the right time for the situations that we face now? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people can do the right thing, but they do it at the wrong time, and so oh. it, it doesn't mm -hmm. have any effect. And mm -hmm. and so you know, when when mm -hmm. we when we look at some of the the things that they want. And of course, these are both first time politician aspirants. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of wet behind the ears. Um, uh, I think that when reality sets in, should both of them, good luck to them, uh, mm -hmm. make it into the legislature, they're going to see that, you know, getting their agendas out with mm -hmm. 15 other, 14 other people uh, might not pan out. Mm -hmm. And uh, our situation in the government is uh, kind of precarious mm -hmm. right now. And so we'll, we'll see how they mm -hmm. do. Um, I really think, though, that. Uh, the key for them right now is just to get themselves mm -hmm. out there. Of course, our primary was split by party, and so they have mm -hmm. to like introduce themselves to the other side uh, of the electorate, and, and that's mm -hmm. that can be a very daunting task. So now we're going to see uh, uh, whether they're able to harness their resources, and that's part of the beautiful okay. thing about the, uh, a democracy is that um, in order for you to uh, put yourself out there, you're going to have to find and, and use those resources. I know that there's a lot of uh, political analysts and bobbleheads out there that uh, complain when uh, candidates spend money. But the truth is, if I'm going to elect you or give you money to help you in a can uh, campaign, I want to see you put the first hundred dollars in yourself. I want you to show me that money you're talks. I want to I want to see that you're committed to what you believe that you're going to put your own money, put your money where your mouth is. And so 
we're, we're, we'll see how, how the two of them really push themselves out. Yeah, and it's, um, experience would help you, I mean, not just in government in general, but, you know, working with people, cooperation to get a bill into law takes a mm -hmm. lot of compromise. You have to learn how to do that. And I think it also depends who do they surround themselves with, who's helping them on their campaign, who's their support. Who's their staff? Right. <laughs> Who's their support? Who's their staff, that? right? Yeah, because it, it's the legislature is a very dynamic institution. Yeah, right. And mm -hmm. I've said this uh, time and time and again, you can have the most aggressive legislative agenda, but if you don't have the tools or the support um, to push your agenda through, it's going to fall. And right. uh, the promises you made on the campaign trail, you know, aren't your the fruits of your labor aren't going to be seen at right. the end of the term. So. Uh, I said that time and time and again. So it also depends on that, not just experience, but who do you surround yourself with? Who are your key, who are your key support system, and um, who 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 yeah. who do you listen to and take advice from that can help you push that through? And how well you play with others? Yeah, how yeah. well you play with others? Yeah. I don't know how they've been playing this election season. It's been <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. quite rocky for some. They're mm -hmm. getting red stars in yeah. kindergarten class. Yes. That's okay. for sure. I wanted to ask you more about like Kelly and how she was able to make the top fifteen, but. You know her peers that are also very grassroots rooted, like Ned Pablo, place last. You know why? Why was there a, the stark difference? Why Kelly and not Ned? Well, look, look at uh, Julius made it to number seven. His counterpart, Sabina Paris, she's also a uh, grassroots uh, or organizer. She helped with Protei mm -hmm. Um So, you know, it's you can't. It's it's unfair to say that you know Kelly made it and and okay. the other grassroots kind of didn't. So. Some made it and some didn't. Mm -hmm. okay. And like you were saying, it's how well you play with others. Um, if people see you as uh, antagonistic or uh, too aggressive, mm -hmm. or if you just rub people the wrong way, mm -hmm. you're not going to get it. Let's face it, the, the political game um, is uh, also part popularity contest, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, if you don't have the personality to go along with your agenda, you're not going to make it. Um, and so we see that in the results of the election. You look at who lost on both right. sides and, mm -hmm. and they are not, um, mm -hmm. you know, homecoming kings. So they didn't make it. Um, but I, I think the electorate on Guam is a, is a little more uh, complicated than that. Um, that's why we see people like Sabina Paris. That's why we see people like Roland Bloss who made mm -hmm. it in. That's why we see people like Do uh, Dr. Kelly Marsh. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we don't see people like Ned Pablo mm -hmm. um, and others, right, who didn't make it. So we'll see. Yeah. Now, speaking of grassroots, let's go to that second question. When we talked, they both talked about the tourism or right. culture cultural, and tourism, cultural right. preservation and heritage preservation. You were speaking with me briefly before this that you didn't like their answers? Well, it's not that I didn't like their answers. It's, it's that, again, you might have a brilliant idea, but if you bring the idea at the wrong time, well, it's not going to pan out. Things like cultural preservation or cultural tourism or even ecotourism aren't just something that you can just open up shop tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. um, these are things that are going to take long and sustained efforts. Um, we might be able to realize that kind of industry in a decade, uh, but we are nowhere near um, anything like that. I mean, you look at the hotels now. The hotels all have their infrastructure. They all have their dinner shows. How many of those uh, hotels have uh, authentic Chamorro uh, representations in, in those, mm -hmm. like one or two? I think one or what, two. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Sheraton. Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. it, right? And the rest are all touting uh, Blue Hawaii Polynesian dreams, right? And so we have, uh, what is that place? Uh, um, down by Beach Bar, there's like this little right cultural thing. whatever the or the... no they have like this uh theme park or whatever oh, the Lenatla park and, and where's that now i don't think mm -hmm. it even exists anymore in fact that's the whole reason why uh that the baldega group got that qc mm -hmm. was because they planned to do that and, and it's defunct so mm -hmm. having those kinds of things is going to take a lot of time and effort and with the situation that the government and money, of, yeah, and, and money <laughs> it right. takes a lot of resources. It takes a lot of resources, I mean, resources that industry, we don't have. Yes, I mean, when we're talking, you know, financial crisis in the government and exactly. tax tax cuts, um, definitely resource. We need the resource to back those up. Yeah, right. and, and some of the ideas that each of the candidates up here tonight they brought up was with the Dr. Uh, Titano. She said environmental tourism. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Julius he brought up 
uh, commerce for culture and then like, the gumazamti and yeah. like, right. bringing that mm-hmm. together and I mean those things can you can start laying down the groundwork um mm-hmm. the the issue is um where's the money yes. going to come from now Julius brought up a good point he said that he would uh, 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 help the Zoamti by using insurance. Well, that's great because that's money that the government of Guam doesn't have to allocate. That's just something that he has to deal with with mm-hmm. the uh, uh, private insurers. Um, but when you talk about things like uh, ecotourism, I mean, imagine what we would have to do and how much money we would have to spend as a government of Guam to clean up and, and uh, restore a mm-hmm. place to have uh, uh, ecotourism. This is not Luta. Um, you go to Luta and, and uh, it's, pristine. It's, it's, a, it's pristine. Right. So you they, they promote that because mm-hmm. that is their resource. Right now, if I wanted to go to, uh, I don't know, NCS or whatever, you plan mm-hmm. to build some kind of ecotourism place, how much money would it cost me to haul out all the junk cars and uh, clean up the side of the road and maintain a place like that? It's just, it's a great idea. I, I wish that Guam had that kind of resource available mm-hmm to sort of uh, uh, infuse our economy with right now, but um, that's just not, I mean, we all live on Guam. Mm-hmm. We know that uh, uh, our, our environment is nowhere near pristine at this juncture in our history. So I just don't see how something like that is going to pan out uh, when we're facing a budget crisis. Mm-hmm. You know, let's go to one of our news stories today. You know, Ron McNinch, Ron McNinch, he spoke at the Rotary and said, you know, why do we still have this law that allows uh, the loser to run a writing campaign. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts? Yeah, that has a lot to do with the uh, mm-hmm. what we've seen in the news mm-hmm. with the headlines with the Agilam Tiaqua right. team. We just mm-hmm. heard from the Guam mm-hmm. Election Commission tonight. Right. They won't be doing that hand count that mm-hmm. they requested, right. and so now we're dealing with that writing. Well, mm-hmm. here's the thing. The Agilam Tiaqua team are part of the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. The Democratic Party saved Mike San Nicholas signed a unity pledge. Uh, it's very clear that it says that if I should lose a primary election, mm-hmm. I will not uh, engage in a write-in campaign and I will repudiate anybody yes. who does uh, mm-hmm. nominate me forward for that. And yet, I read in the newspaper today and, mm-hmm. and uh, watched on KUAM that that's mm-hmm. not the case. He said that he would consider it because he believes that it's a mandate of the people. Um, so what does that say about somebody's Loyalty? Keeping their word, yeah. it, 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 not even I, loyalty I to a party. It's, 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 I wouldn't say it's loyalty. I think um, it's, you know, we're all taught your word is, is your bond. Is right? your bond. Yeah. It's your value. It's, it's your word is just, it's you. It's yeah. what you bring to the table. It's how people read you. Um, and as a leader, um, I think, you know, Governor Gutierrez said it best, you know, as the true statesman uh, he is, when he went on a uh, patio royal show this morning, um, he, he gave um, an excellent, a very strong statement that his team is confidently behind uh, Lou and Josh, right. and because of that pledge, because yeah. he signed the pledge, and you know, I, 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 as you know, a fellow Democrat, you know, I am. It rejuvenated me to see a statesman like you know Governor Gutierrez, our last grassroots governor, mm-hmm. um, come behind the the winning the winning team. I mean, it it, it very it spoke to me. You know, as a Democrat, I wish, um, you know, it, it's it's your bond, and right. I, I don't know what else to say about that. I think it's it's more than just party. I think I don't think any candidate has any ill will when mm-hmm. they pick up a packet to run for right. office, and. You know, some people say you choose a party on Guam not because of your platform or it's simply because of family ties. But I think we all choose a party um, of, of not only to reflect our values, but how we, we, we believe, you know, our group can serve the people better this way. Our group mm-hmm. can serve the people better that way. And that's what keeps the party together. Right. So, um I don't know what else to add, you know, to that. But um, do you think he'll lose the loyalty of the supporters? You uh, know, no, there's like always going to be, word. you know, diehard supporters. But the thing is, is that he, one of the comments that he made and in, in why he would accept it is because he says, if this is the will of the people, well, the will of the people has already been expressed. We had an election. If you added up everybody for Dennis Rodriguez, Carl Gutierrez, uh, Lulian Guerrero and Ray Tenorio, mm-hmm. they overwhelmingly said, well, we want 
these people and not those others. And so right. I don't know who's these people that mm -hmm. he's uh, bending his will to. And, and, and what about the will I of everybody else who already spoke? At that right. press I saw two people. Yeah, so I'm not sure, you know, the, the mass will of those is two there. people. And, mm -hmm. you know, also it's, we talk about party, you know, it's, I've always seen it as, you know, it was a privilege to be considered as potential candidate under the Democratic banner. Um, this election cycle, I decided, you know, um, I wouldn't run. Um, you know, I'm gonna put family first and, you know, raise my child first. You're but... gonna run? You're gonna run? <laughs> You're gonna hear no, first. No. <laughs> But you know when the packet was you know picked up, you know it was it was it was um, a very humbling and experience. I it was an honor to be considered. I, I thought it was a privilege, you know, to run under the Democratic mm -hmm. banner. You know, I grew up as you know seeing it that way. Like mm -hmm. it, the Democratic Party just represents so much to me, and I'm sure to everybody else. So I mean that's that's what I can say about that. Yeah, granted, you were saying, Adrian, too, that a lot of that these two candidates, we'll go back to the, the candidates mm -hmm. we had on tonight, mm -hmm. um, had stuck with their platforms before the primary and even after mm -hmm. uh, the primary election. But with, with the experience that you guys have seen with the elections that we've seen here on Guam, uh, have you noticed that some would shift or, or just overall well, change? Of course it expands, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you win the support of your party and you made it past the, uh, past the primary, you have to open yourself up to mm -hmm. make to broaden your appeal. Mm -hmm. um, but in the past, I've seen people completely abandon mm -hmm. their uh, uh, or original platform and embrace this new one just for the sake of getting votes. And you have to sort of take your hat off uh, for people who are willing to stick to their guns. Um, and so kudos to them for doing that and uh, okay. more importantly kudos to them for expanding their uh, platform and being able to reach across the aisle being able to listen to other people's ideas um, like I said I, I've known Julius I, I know Julius personally and and uh, mm -hmm. one thing I can say that he did was um, in his platform he really listened to a variety of people even people that ideologically are opposed to him he and I are like oil and vinegar right but um i'm i'm happy to say that he um he sat down and took the time uh listened to reason and he's incorporated some of that um into his platform and and that is the that is the the real um quality of a good politician is somebody who is able to compromise uh, on mm -hmm. their beliefs somebody who is able to listen to somebody who they might not agree with um, and come to some kind yeah. of compromise. That I mean, that's the only way you're going to get things done. Otherwise, you're good for nothing. You might yeah. as well give and me and her the salary and move. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, you work for everybody. So yeah. you know, you're right. going to have people come into your office um, who you don't, you know, necessarily see eye to eye with. But mm -hmm. you know, as a public servant, you have to you have to listen to them. You have to take their concerns. You know. Um, uh, you know very seriously and see how you can work to help them out uh, you can't close your door to anybody right. for just simple differences or you know whether or not they supported you so definitely what about weaknesses have you seen any potential weaknesses or just in viewing these candidates that were on tonight with Julius and Dr. Tides know something that they should mm -hmm. work on to strengthen their campaign or their platforms as they move ahead to the general they need a better ground game both mm -hmm. of them a lot, of, um, a lot of broad responses we're seeing from right. the newcomers. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have to take that risky, uh, edgy response um, because people want to see that. I know some of the people that didn't make it past the primary, uh, I've sat on this uh, rostrum before and, and, <laughs> sat, and sat on this couch many times, right? And, and the way they answer is so broad because they don't want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's what the electorate is looking for. They yeah. want somebody with mm -hmm. a clear and concise plan, not just, uh, hey, let's go to the moon, folks, right? I mean, mm -hmm. how need, are we going to get there? How are we going to get there, right? And how are you going to mm -hmm. pay for it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, I would like to see that uh, with both of them, although they, they both sort of have started that. But they need a ground game, politically speaking. They need more signs. Um, you know, Dr. Kelly Marsh kept saying, I know a lot of people don't know me, and that's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. um, and so what are you going to do about yeah, that? Right. Um, same with Julius. 
you don't yeah, know him, I, right? I know. And um, he's been in the media I mean, for a long time. Right, he's so been in the media for a long time, but you don't know anything about him or his platform? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I think that needs to uh, expand more. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes good old-fashioned signs mm -hmm. uh, will help. Um, and, and or in use, this day and age, uh, social media commercials. Right, you know, I, 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 your you clue. could... You could be on Tinder and see an ad for, uh, you know, Lou and Josh. You know what I mean? So that would be you, interesting. You need, you need yeah. to be... Both swipe right, yeah, right? <laughs> so yeah, as long as they, they, you know, I think they just need to introduce themselves to the public. Right. Um, share their platform, get into more specifics. I think the electorate really wants to get to know how they're going to implement it. Um, but um, they seem like, you know, very energetic, um, committed individuals who really want to push through this. Mm -hmm. Maybe KUAM can uh, sponsor some kind of broad uh, candidate <laughs> thing where they ask some yeah. really hard hitting questions. Oh, well, I like that you brought up the point about social media and, you know, in mm -hmm. this day and age. You think that um, there, there's something else that they can do to express uh, or, or get the interest of the younger voters? You know, I think, you know, when people bring up social media in campaigning, um, it reminds me of this article. Um, I was reading a couple weeks ago. Um, although campaigns are putting resources and effort into this, it's not as reaching. It's not as effective because it's not reaching the demographic that necessarily is registered to vote, mm -hmm. or the demographic that is registered but doesn't make it to the election every election. Right. So um, you could put resources and time and effort into a social media campaign, but that doesn't necessarily trans translate, translate as votes. you like. Yes. But again, mm -hmm. the great thing about social media, it's usually free or right. very low cost. So yeah. it doesn't hurt to, to mm -hmm. do it. Uh, definitely, you need to put stuff into the traditional media, mm -hmm. TV, yes. radio, newspapers. And, you know, I always believe, you know, you got to knock on those doors. That's right. You got to meet the people where they are, talk to them. So I think that's your tried and true method you should definitely take up. Canvas. Right. Mm -hmm. It's hard work, though. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think on the senatorial level, I don't know if they have that kind of human resource to be mm. able to do that. But uh, definitely, if you can't canvas, if you can't do uh, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. then social media mm -hmm. and um, putting in your money and, and allocating it for that and, and mm -hmm. just showing up to all the matais and everything is always a good thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it comes with free food too, so, <laughs> you know. Any other questions? Yeah, so another issue that they discussed was with uh, LGBTQ issues and inequality. We heard from uh, Dr. Tyson Miller saying she believes in it, is motivated in the issues of when it comes to equality. She would support the concept and work with anyone working on legislation dealing with it. But that's not a direct answer that no. she would dive in right. and do it herself. Mm -hmm. And then with Julius, he mentions how Guam is diverse, unified in making... He defend um, diversity, but right. I think he had a previous incident with Blasia. Right, the senatorial candidate as well. Right. I think you should get them both on the... That's what he was saying. That's what we were saying. We should have brought them all because... He's transgender the senatorial candidate. And so I, I, understand, I understand they had a previous incident, so I don't know if that directly equates to what he said tonight, right. which mm -hmm. was he defends diversity. Well, I, I think that the bottom line is... Are we equal or not under the eyes of the law? Mm -hmm. And um, I think laws should be made um, with in mind with everybody, whether mm -hmm. you agree with them or don't agree with them, whether you like them or you don't like them. That's not the point. The, 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 the law should be colorblind, sexual orientation blind, all those kinds of things that separate us. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we're going to have a level playing field on Guam, then we need laws that are going to protect everybody. And I think that any senator who will not defend that is not just infringing on this one particular group's uh, rights, but it's something that's going to affect mm -hmm. everybody, and that's somebody who should not be on the legislative floor. I think, um, you know, I, I just when Julius answered, you know, I did hear about, you know, the incident, um, I guess, was that on his podcast? Yeah, it was a podcast. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't get to see the interview. I did talk to Lassia about it, and... Um, but what I noticed from his answer when you guys asked him that tonight, uh, first he first came off it as Guam is very diverse. We come from all different parts of the world, but that's just speaking to you know race. Right. But we have to we have to remember that it's much broader than race. You know, we have members of our community, um, you know, uh, transgender, um, disabled. gay, disabled. Mm -hmm. um, so 
and I don't necessarily agree that the law should be colorblind. I think the law should actively include people of all groups and recognize them and recognize that they need certain protections mm-hmm. because historically our government has failed them, has failed to protect them, has failed to provide, to ensure that they're provided the same opportunities as everybody else. So I think that's where I kind of disagree. <laughs> the law should be I, I don't think colorblind that, or I, I understand what you're saying, but yeah. I don't think on Guam, we have that kind of issue, mm-hmm. right? That That's an issue that is very much a, a part of the American political uh, fabric, right? They, they have issues there, uh, mm-hmm. hate crimes and things like that. That's not something we necessarily see But how on do you Guam. measure it on Guam where we don't have any way of recording that? We don't have any data regarding transgender people, you know, being victims of crime. We don't have any data of any of that. Of Maybe they're not. I, that's, I don't know. That's very hard yeah. to say because all, you you know we wouldn't know unless we're transgender ourselves whether they're victims of you know these crimes. Which historically around the world, you know, it, it's shown that transgender right. people are ha- the most issues. Yeah. Yeah. They're the most victimized out of everybody. So I think you know we need to have laws uh, documenting um, everything. I think we need to better address how we can provide them protections and guarantee them their rights. Um, but I think it's very hard to say that on Guam we don't have that problem when there's no way on Guam that we've ever documented that problem. Yeah, it's tough to document something when, you, again, you're trying to, to say the most without offending anyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, it's, it's, it's more like you shouldn't beat people up, period. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I, I don't care mm-hmm. if you are uh, transgendered or in a wheelchair or mm-hmm. blind or yeah. an mm-hmm. MMA fighter. Mm-hmm. You don't mm-hmm. do that, and there will be legal repercussions for you when you engage in that mm-hmm. kind of behavior. Um, and I think that, that that is the beauty of uh, law. And of course, it's majority rule, but it's also minority rights. Um, and wow. so I think in order to, to uh, level the playing field for everybody, we should just have a standard mm-hmm. you know, of, 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 of uh, mm-hmm. behavior that, that is acceptable and not acceptable in our community. And, yeah. and I think uh, things like that, mm-hmm. um, you shouldn't be discriminated against because of whatever your preference is or whatever your race is or whatever your disability is or whatever your ability is. Um, and, and that we should just try to aim for the most fair uh, system that we have because let's face it, life is not fair mm-hmm. for, for everybody. Everybody has their ups and downs. Uh, uh, not everybody's going to like you. Uh, not everybody's going to agree with you. Um, but we should at least have the same opportunities afforded to us and the same protections that prevent uh, uh, us mm-hmm. from being discriminated against, no matter where we are in, in, in our life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nick, I think it's about time to call it. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did want to get uh, one more comment from each of you. Is there something you feel that uh, the candidates that were on tonight, either Julius or both from Julius and Dr. Tyson, is something that you wish you would have heard from them as they made that push for people to go out and vote for them in November? Um, you know, I really wish I could have listened to the first half of yeah. the segment, but well, we were don't tell them that. <laughs> <We're locked laughs> out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, we were kind of locked out. So um, I really wish I, I heard the entirety of uh, the questions and their answers. But um, I think we heard very, um, of course, with a platform like this, mm-hmm. your answers have to be very concise. Right. And so I, I don't think they were able to get into specifics. But I think if they reach out to people, um, you know, where they are, uh, knock on the doors, canvas, get out there, um, your traditional ways of, you know, getting the vote out, getting yourself out, um, they would be able to better communicate their, their platform. I wish that they would have been a little more specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wish that they would have brought up uh, a little more on how to deal with uh, some of the, the issues um, that we're currently facing. Um, but that's probably out of their scope since it was, you know, the questions were being asked. Mm-hmm. Um, but and they're I, on a time limit. And they're on a yeah, time, time limit. limit. Uh, but I do wish them the best, both mm-hmm. of them. And uh, I wish that they would really get out there. I think they have great ideas. Uh, they come from very different ends of the political spectrum. And I think that's a healthy thing to have, um, right. is a, a differences of opinion. Um, and so I wish them the best and I, and I wish them um, good luck in all the hard work that they have to do. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, 
may the best person win. Yes. Or may they both <laughs> yeah, make definitely. get it, yeah. you know? Right, you never know what the voters may the say. odds be ever in their favor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see who the next round is next uh, Monday when DH and tonight is up, and then we'll see when you guys return, hopefully. I don't know about you, Ricky, you're past due. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting ready to get our... I'm getting ready to catch. <laughs> 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 We're going to National Geographic live birth on you. We're a different kind of after party <laughs> here. Thank you, yeah. Facebook yeah. viewers. Really appreciate, again, comment for all the questions. I hope that uh, if your your candidates didn't get to your questions, that they go back on mm -hmm. and they answer yeah. them. Just put it in the comment below. See ya. Mm -hmm. Adios. Adios. Adios.